ATC viewers, welcome back. Chris Nichols here from the camera store with a brand new camera, the Fuji X-T10. Now Fuji's gotten us this very early. Keep in mind, this is a prototype camera, but we're gonna be putting it through its paces. We're gonna talk about some of the new features, all the image quality here, it's all pre-production guys, but it's here, it's early, and it's gonna be fun. Come with me. Now holding the X-T10, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that it is an X-T camera because of the bump on top. In fact, that's how Fuji's marketing it. XTs are going to be their SLR-esque kind of cameras, which I guess means that XE cameras will be more the rangefinder style. The other thing you're going to notice about the X-T10, it is small and it is lightweight. Very compact, very easy to carry. In fact, it's essentially the same size as the X-30 that they make. This camera is aimed squarely at the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II market. You know, we're hitting that kind of small mirrorless camera, but remember, we're packing that same fantastic 16 megapixel X-Trans APS-C size sensor in here. Now, the other thing I noticed when it comes to handling this camera is that it's incredibly well designed. Already, I've only been playing with it here for about an hour or so, but I really like the grip. It's comfortable, it's a nice rubber texture. I don't feel like I'm gonna drop it. But also we've got the same tactile control dials, exposure comp, shutter speeds, aperture control on the lenses, and we've got all of our continuous drive shooting on this dial on the left. I like that because I hate the drive button, if you know from watching my other videos, on the XE series of cameras. We've also got a little switch here that clicks us right to auto. Now this is smart because if you get a user, a more beginner user who's maybe intimidated by these controls, they've got a quick selector there, puts the camera to full auto just like that. We also have two control dials, one on the back and front. The back I can also push to punch in focus, and on the front I can customize it. I've set that to push for ISO, I can then change it very quickly. Now of course the X-T10 is a more compact, affordable, and scaled down version of the X-T1. So where are some of those changes? Well we don't get weather sealing in the camera unfortunately. And when it comes to the viewfinder which made the X-T1 so great, we have a very similar looking setup here. The magnification is decent, but it's essentially the X-E2's viewfinder. That being said though, it's still very, very sharp. It's updating quickly, I'm not getting any lag. Uh, the screen on the back, 920,000 pixels, it's beautiful and articulating and very, very large. And you know, I, I can't help but say this, when you're shooting a Fuji, looking at the screen, on mirrorless, getting to see these updates, you can't help but appreciate the color. Fuji JPEGs just have such beautiful color. It's accurate, it's vivid, excellent. like a little invasion of privacy. Relive the moment. Unfortunately, the moment's passed for the Canon Image Square Center. Uh, you know, Brand decided it's sad to see these very interesting uh, projects disappear. It just couldn't be sustained in Calgary. Is it because of mirrorless? I don't know, fitting. All right, so I've got a tricky situation here. I've got a sunlit building in the background, but I've got these plants in front and they're very, very dark in the shade here. Perfect option for fill flash. Now the X-T1 had no built-in flash. You had the external accessory flash, but look at this. Very cute, tiny little pop-up. You don't even know it's there. It's so well molded to the body design. But unfortunately, there's a bittersweet story. It's there, but it's too small. I'm gonna take a shot here without the flash. Now, 180th of a second, maximum flash sync. I'm at F8, and I'm at 100 ISO. Take a picture without the flash here. Of course, that plant is totally black. Pop up the flash for some fill. Even though this potted plant is only about a foot and a half away, I barely get any fill there. It's better than nothing, but if you're shooting friends and family backlit against the sun or something like that, this flash just doesn't have enough kick. You're gonna have to be really close or maybe hit them up more on overcast days or no direct sunlight. All right, so I like the light that we're getting in there. I'm gonna shoot, but it's pretty dark. Uh, 18-135 right now, shooting at the long end, 5.6 is the max. 
We're not going to do a low light ramp up like we normally do because the fact is the X-T10 has the exact same sensor that you're going to find in the X-E2, the X-T1. In fact, if I had any complaint about the Fuji lineup, it's just, although their sensor's fantastic, we haven't seen any new changes in a long time, and unfortunately this camera's no exception. Still, we are getting great low light performance out of the X-Trans sensor. Let's see what we get for 3200 ISO here. All right, and again, you know, we're going to look at this, but I already know from the Fujis that it's going to be great image quality. Still nice and sharp, minimal noise. I mean, you got to remember that compared to something like the EM5 Mark II, this is a big advantage. The larger sensor gives us better low light. And against the Sony a6000, which is a stellar camera, you're still going to get a slight advantage in low light with the Fuji sensor. So although it is an older sensor and I'd like to see it be updated, it still is very current and competitive in today's market. All right, now of course the X-T1 was a very fast camera, eight frame per second shooting, had predictive autofocus, you know, it was a good all around outdoor camera. Now the X-T10, Fuji saying we get the exact same frame rate. I'm not quite convinced, but let's just do a test here. Listen to this, but also pay attention to how short this buffer is. So it's pretty quick off the start. I'd say seven frames per second around there, but we're only getting about six or seven shots and then it slows down quite a bit. So, you know, it's great for family stuff, but this is not gonna be the kind of camera you wanna shoot a lot of journalism or sports with. Now I've been liking the autofocus on the X-T10 today and they have updated it. We've got zone focusing now. We've got the predictive autofocusing that the X-T1 used and it does work great. Tracks moving subjects very well. We also have a new feature which we're not allowed to call 3D tracking, but it's a lot like Nikon's 3D tracking system, but we're not calling it 3D tracking, okay? And on this camera today, because this is so early, it's pre-production, I'm not finding that's working very well, but I can see how it's implementing it. It is detecting what you're focusing on and tracking and following it as it moves across the screen, not only for movement left and right, up and down, but also for front and back distances. Now, this focusing, when it works, should be excellent, and I bet we'll see it on a lot of the other Fujis, because remember, they're so good at updating old cameras with new technology as firmware improves. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the video guy. I'm back again to talk about the uh, relatively uninspired X-T10 video features. Uh, it's the same sub-mini mic that's kind of a pain to use. The manual exposure is still tough. You can't see exposure until you hit record. Um, you know, none of that really matters though, because if you look at the video from it, and look at this, we have aliasing here, we've got moiré here, it's just bad over there, bad here. Nice skin tones, actually, but the rest of it's all just bad. So, uh, you know, until we see a new sensor or a new processor or something, I think that's going to be the case with all the X-Trans cameras. Beautiful stills, bad video. So we got Nathan Nelson here, welcome back again. Hello, Nathan hello. does shoot Fuji, you've got your Fuji in your bag. Yeah, got the X-Pro one. This is my $10 bag. <laughs> How much does that bag cost? Uh, roughly $10 more. Yeah, bullshit. Um, so we've got the X-T10 and what Nate's going to do is he's going to take this out, do some professional shooting with models, right? Yeah, we're going to take uh, yeah. a model out and just kind of test it, play with it, see yeah. what functions. Get some skin tones and stuff like that. Yep. Now, check it out. There's your flash on the oh, camera. Dude, That's what I used today. probably going to switch that for a Profoto B1. Fine. But, uh, Fine. It's All there. Right. Well, I'm Chris Nichols. I'm a big deal. I got a lot of stuff to do, so I'm going to take off and go do my thing. And I'll be <laughs> back tomorrow, too. and we'll wrap it up with all the final pressures. But I do want to hear what you think about it, using it in a studio situation, yep. and a, you know, a more serious situation. Beautiful. All right. See you guys later. Hey, so we're just uh, outside the studio here in the parking lot, and uh, we're shooting with the uh, Fuji X-T10. Now, I've always been a big fan of the Fuji glass. I'm using the 56 mil right now, and uh, I want to shoot wide open. It's bright, it's sunny, so I've got a five-stop ND on here. But Fuji's glass has always been crazy, crazy sharp. It's one of the reasons why I actually use their cameras. But uh, we're using this, uh, this texture here for a little bit of backdrop and uh, make some portraits. So the camera itself is very small. Um, it's essentially a tiny X-T1. And I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I, the big thing with cameras now, with mirrorless, is you know everybody seems to be going smaller and smaller and smaller. It does cut down on the weight that you have in your bag, 
but as you can see, you know, I usually have a couple of people with me anyway, so the weight isn't a big thing. I would rather have something that had a little bit beefier dials on it, a little bit more grip. But uh, outside of that, I mean, it's the exact same sensors you get in the X-T1, uh, the X-T2, that kind of thing. So the image quality is the exact same. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, focus and that kind of thing. It is pre-production model. It does seem to be focusing just as quickly as anything else. I don't know if there's going to be much of a change on that, if it's going to be faster. But uh, as it sits right now, it's about what you'd expect from every other Fuji. Outside of that, it's still got the 180 sync speed, which, you know, I'm syncing up with the B1s, which are working beautifully. And, uh, you know, from a, from a standard Fuji perspective, it's exactly the same operation as, uh, as any other camera. It's just a, a smaller footprint. So with this camera, you know, as far as Fuji cameras go, this operates the exact same as the rest of them. You know, the dials are in the same places, the menus are the exact same, it's the same sensor, same image quality, all of those type of things. The only thing that you're getting is a smaller footprint. Um, for someone like me, it, it's too small. If you've got childlike hands like Chris, it's probably amazing. Um, you know, essentially all you're trying to do is decide between the XE2 or the XT1. Just like the XE2 is a smaller version of the X-Pro1, this is just a smaller version of the XT1. And the XE2 and the XT10 have the exact same sensor, the exact same viewfinder, everything. It's just dependent on what style of body you want to go with. Lens-wise, um, you know, a bigger lens like this, the 50 to 140, it doesn't balance super well on a uh, body that's this small. If you're using, you know, like the 14 mil or the 35, 56, the smaller primes, it'll probably do just great. But when you're getting into the bigger zooms, um, you know, you've got this really tiny body, big lens thing going on and it, it doesn't feel great. Um, but outside of that, you know, if you're looking for a, a smaller camera to fit in your bag, this is probably a pretty good choice to go with. All right, so I've shot the X-T10 and actually I really enjoyed using this camera and I think it's hitting a very interesting niche for Fuji. You know, let's face it, everybody loves the lenses. They look at Fuji now as a very prestigious company, uh, but that also means they look at it as a very pricey company. They're not the most affordable cameras on the market. And I think the X-T10 is doing a good thing because it's giving us a lower price point, but it's still giving us a classy camera. I mean, let's face it, the XM, the XA series, they just didn't do very well for Fuji because they lacked a lot of features and it showed, you know. This camera here is giving us just a perfect combination of small size, retro looks, cute design, but we've got good usable devices here as well. Decent viewfinder, I like the LCD screen on the back, I like the dials, and the controls and handling are very well thought out. The two command dials, I mean really, Fuji's giving us a lot here for our dollar. Now complaints on the X-T10, well that flash is just next to useless, unfortunately. No commander mode, it's tiny, the distance is pathetic, it's cute, the way they fit it on there, but it's just not usable. The other thing too, the buffer rate is pretty underwhelming. I mean, if you're shooting this casually, family and stuff like that, uh, it's not gonna be the biggest detriment, although even shooting pets and kids, you might find that it's gonna top out quicker than you might want it to. And if you're a sports photographer or wildlife, forget it, it's just not gonna appeal to you. Video still sucks, there's just nothing we can do about that still with the Fujis. And I did complain about the sensor not being updated, but again, you just gotta keep coming to the back that it's still such a good sensor. You know, it's funny, Nathan was even trying the RAW files and he's like, oh, I can't get them to open, I don't have the software available, but it's okay because the JPEGs are just so damn good, I barely have to do any work on them. So all in all, guys, I think that the X-T10 is gonna be a very appealing camera for people just starting out in mirrorless, but they still wanna get the stuff that makes Fuji's great. The image quality, the handling, the looks and the design, it's all here. Now, as usual, guys, we want to hear your feedback. Check us out on Twitter. Look at our Instagram channel. Subscribe, please. We need more subscribers. And uh, leave comments about what you think about the X-T10. Maybe you don't like the design and the looks. You're wrong, but you're welcome to your opinion. So put it in the comments, and we will get back to you guys. All right, so we're going to close this video out with Ali here in slow motion. So for all of you who say that we never have women in our videos, there you go. You can leave us alone about it now.